Through Night sent me this TN12 Pro, and I got to tell you, my search for the perfect pocket thrower might be finally at an end. Welcome back to Shule Lights. Through Night recently sent me this Through Night TN12 Pro. They said they wanted to send it to me so I could check it out, and I actually didn't do any research ahead of time, so I didn't know anything about the light. I just thought, hey, send me a light, I'll check it out. When I first opened the box, I noticed that it was a really thin light. I mean, I saw the pictures before they sent it to me, but I didn't realize that it was barely thicker than the diameter of an 18650. I thought it was more of a 21700 sized light. So I said, hey, this is a tiny little light. Okay, so what'd they put in the top here? A 3535 emitter? So what is this, a little floody little EDC light? And then I looked at it and said, whoa, wait a minute there. That is a Luminous SFT40. That's that new high intensity thrower emitter. And I already have an SFT40 and a couple other lights. This is the Convoy M21A. And so I knew before I even turned it on that this was going to be a throwy little pocket light. And that completely got me excited about it. I've been on the hunt for the perfect pocket thrower for quite a while now. And I'll get back into that in a second. But let's talk about what's in the box and a little funny thing that happened to me. So you get a manual here. And then you get a clip, pocket clip. And there's a bag of lanyard, O-rings, extra button. And you also get a charging cable because there is a charging port built in on the side right here. And this is always a great thing, a holster. I love it when lights come with a holster because, you know, going and getting a holster that fits uh, just right can be a pain in the butt. So when I first got the light out of the box, there was a little tag hanging off it that said, please tighten down all the caps before you start it. So I tightened down the cap and it immediately comes on like this. And then I go, oh, that's weird. And then the UI isn't working and I'm going, what's going on? And I was getting really frustrated. So I just undid it again. And then I was like, wow, that's weird. Is my driver broken? And then I'm hitting the button. No. So I you know, take it all the way off. I look at it. Everything looks good. I put it back on. Sure enough, it starts again right as soon as I cinch it. And it took me a while to figure out, and I, I'm ashamed to say this, that there is a button on the back that was already pressed. So just unpress that button, cinch it down, light will operate normally. And that brings me to one of the things that's really great about this light. This is the same interface that I love so much on the Convoy L7. It's got an e-switch on the side and a forward clicky on the back. Now, the reason I love that interface so much is because, for one thing, if you want to go straight to turbo, you can just hit this back and you're immediately on turbo. Secondly, instead of having a really complicated UI here to try and figure out how to do things like signaling or pulsing, you can literally just pulse, 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 pulse. I'm not clicking all the way. I'm not latching the button. I'm just, you know, I can latch it, but if I just half press, I can do any signaling or flickering or anything I want. Now, if you do want to operate it normally, you can just push the e-switch on the side here. It turns on. And then the UI is as simple as press and hold, and it cycles through low, medium, high. Low, medium, high, over and over. Now, if you want to go to a hidden turbo, you double click and it goes to turbo. Now, remember that the switch on the back always takes you into turbo as well. So if you click on the side and then you turbo, when you unclick this button on the back, the light will then turn off. That's the same exact behavior that we see on the Ace Beam L35. And I really like this kind of combination of e-switch and clicky with the turbo on the back. It just makes it simple to use and easy to grasp. I like that because one, I feel confident if I give this light to a friend, they'll know how to operate it. But two, even I, sometimes if I don't pick up a light for a long time, kind of it takes me a moment to get oriented to how to use the UI again. But a UI like this is dead simple to use and I can select what I want every time. Let's take a look at the output on the lumen tube here. If I click it on on low, 
we're getting 50 lumens. And then if I press and hold and go to medium, I'm rating it at about 200 lumens, a little over that. Press and hold again to go to high. Oops, I must've gone too far. Now I'm getting about 450 lumens, a little over. If I double click, I get myself 1800 lumens at startup and then it quickly drops. So consider this about a 1500 light at ANSI. That's a lot of lumens for a little tiny light that disappears into your pocket. For a thrower, I definitely wouldn't normally measure the tint of the light, but I think it's worth pointing out that SFT 40s can run kind of green and the convoy offerings that I've been getting are pretty green. Now, I don't mind it so much when I put it on turbo because then it whitens up and it looks okay. But on a medium ramp, these things are about 141 over BBL and they're pretty gross. So whenever I use an SFT40, I've just had to drive it at turbo for it to look reasonable. But one of the things that I thought was great about the bin of SFT40 that Through Knight's using in their light is that even at low ramp, the tint was not objectionable. Let me go ahead and measure it here. And you can see that we've got only 26 above Delta UV. I mean, that's lower than the typical Samsung LH351D that you'll find in a floody EDC. Let's put it on low and you'll find that it's measuring about 39 over BBL. But then when we throw it on turbo, it's actually a little bit below BBL. So I found the tint for this light to be exceptionally nice for an SFT40. One thing I neglected to mention when I briefly went over the UI was that if it's off and you press and hold, it will put it into a moonlight mode. This moonlight I did measure as sublumen, but I also wanna point out that if you're any closer than about, I don't know, six inches, you do get a donut hole in the center there. That's totally reasonable for a thrower optic. I mean, five inches is really close, but I just wanna point out that it does have a moonlight, so if you were gonna use this for walking around your bedroom at night and you wanna wake a loved one, this has an appropriate sublumen mode. Here we have a size comparison of the Through Night TN12 Pro against common other lights like the GT Nano, a D4V2, a couple of KR1s, and then the through night catapult v6 the reason i chose these exact lights is because i wanted to point out that this is a typical edc size and this light is actually thinner than the d4 v2 now it's longer of course as well but i find that my pockets will accommodate this light no problem it's not only thinner than the d4 v2 but it's considerably thinner than the kr1s now the KR1s have long been the pocket thrower that I've decided is the best for my pocket. I've tried out the Lumen Top GT Nano, and while it's very tiny and it throws extremely well for its size, the battery just leaves a lot to be desired. This thing will be dead within minutes. Now, while I said the KR1 is my favorite pocket thrower, I find it too bulky. Not too heavy, mind you, but just the diameter of it is a little too thick. This head, just a little bulbous, I find it not great for my pocket. The D4 V2, by comparison, is a lot thinner. Let's put them this way so you can see. It's a lot thinner, and you can see that it makes a difference. So while I find that this has been the kind of minimum thrower that I really like in my pocket. And, and when I say that, I've tried out numerous lights. The Manker EO5 Ti was in my pocket for a while, and I found the beam just not good enough to be a true thrower, even though it was really tiny. So this is the light that I've had to basically put up with to get myself a pocket thrower. Then comes the Through Night TN12 Pro, and I find it considerably thinner and I find it throws really well. And I also wanna point out that these two lights use Endurial, and a lot of people find Endurial kind of a problem for a thrower. So the interface on this Through Night TN12 makes a lot more sense 
for a dedicated thrower. Another thing I wanted to point out about the TN12 Pro is that it's got that classic through night black anodization that I love so much. It's super even, super glossy, and very dark black. If you take a look at maybe Hank's offering here, the D4V2, you can see that it's not quite as black and it's a little less glossy. I don't mind this, I just prefer this. But then if you look at Hank's KR1, you can see that it has kind of a matte finish to it. And this I definitely don't like as much as the type of anodization that we're finding on the Through Night TN12 Pro. All right, let's do a little white wall hunting with the TN12 Pro and a KR1. Now, I used to have a KR1 that had an SFT40 in it, but I got rid of it because it was kind of green, and honestly, I liked this one, which has a W1 in it better. This one just throws further because it's more concentrated. It's a tinier emitter. It's a little, little tiny emitter. And there you can see it. So I ended up keeping this KR1 with the W1 and also the KR1 with an SBT90. So this is a pretty expensive offering. This was about $150 light. And you can see that the beam is wider, but it also puts out a ton of lumens. I have auto exposure on right now, but uh, note that this thing puts out about 5,000 lumens compared to the W1, which is about 800. So I'll put them side by side and you can see how much bigger the hotspot is on the SBT90 versus the W1. Now that we have a frame of reference, let's take a look at the SBT90 versus the Through Night. And one of the things you'll notice is that the Through Night is a cooler, purer white, and that the SBT90 has a little bit of a warmish green tint to it. I don't find it objectionable. This is actually one of the better SBT90s, but I note that this is a little cooler and a little more pure white to my eye. So I found that very pleasing. Another thing I'm noticing is that these beams are different, but they're very similar. So again, I don't see this as a replacement for an Ultimate Throw W1, but I do see this as a replacement for something like an SBT90. Since I already have this light and I love it, this one, which is even thinner and fits even more comfortably in my pocket, is really getting my attention. The Through Night TN12 Pro comes with built-in charging via a little flap on the side here, which you can pull out of the way. And there's a USB-C port on the inside. They include a USB-C to USB-A charging cable, which charges the battery that's included inside. Often, I kind of underrate charging in a light, only because of the fact that I don't use it a lot here in my garage. I got a bunch of dedicated chargers and I'll just pull the battery out and do it at the exact rate and speed I want in the charger. However, it does make a lot of sense for a pocket thrower like this, because if I were to bring this Kiron with me on a trip, I would have to bring a dedicated charger with me also to charge this thing. But with this, all I really need is the light and the cable and honestly, sometimes these cables will be already in my car for a phone or something like that, so all I gotta bring is a light. That's really convenient for a pocketable thrower like the TN12 Pro. All right, we're outside and we're gonna get some beam shots of these, these two throwers here, these two pocket throwers, the KR1 with the SBT 90.2 and the Through Night TN12 Pro. So let's hit that tree line back there that's 110 meters away. And you can see straight to turbo here, 5,000 lumens of this SBT 90.2 is just lighting up that whole area. Now, when I go to the through night with this SFT 40, uh, looks like it's, it's very intense too, a little more concentrated. You know, I would argue that the SBT 90 is putting out probably a little more intensity but I mean, it's hard to match what the SBT90 is doing. It's four, it's 5,000 lumens, and this guy is 1,800. Let's get a little focus there. But you know, there's something else to be said about using a light that isn't running SBT90 because this thing gets hot really quickly and it eats cells alive. So I figure that this one's probably going to be 
uh, more efficient and, uh, you know, I, it already is not as hot in the short time we've been using it. Here's my conclusion after using the TN12 Pro for a while. I've been on a search for the perfect pocket thrower. And as I said, some of the smaller throwers like the Manker E05Ti and also the GT Nanos, I just found they didn't throw well enough or their battery life was abysmal. So I started carrying the KR1, but then I found it a little too heavy, a little too chonky. I didn't really love having Endurial for a thrower. There was just, you know, things like that that were keeping it from being my perfect pocket thrower. But now that I have the Thrunite TN12, I feel like this is the light I'm going to put in my pocket when I go to Disneyland or some other amusement park, and I feel like I want a thrower to be able to point out some distant object. And before you laugh at me, this is really useful for that kind of stuff. One of my favorite things to do on the Indiana Jones ride is to get to the front of the queue with that little room where they show you the instructions for the ride, turn around and blast that dark area where the Eeyore sign is. It never fails to get oohs and ahs from the people around me. So in conclusion, I find that you gotta have a light that's a little bigger so that you can fit that 18650 in there. These throwers just really need an 18650 at a minimum. I find that the 14500 AA sized aren't cutting it. And so the Thrunite TN12 Pro is checking off all the boxes I need for the ideal pocket thrower to take with me everywhere I go.